Hello everybody, so let's talk about PET G filament printing on a Bamboo P1S. So if you don't have a Bamboo P1S, some of these settings will probably change, which is probably the heat setting will change. Not the flow rate or stuff like that, but probably the heat setting. So for starters, what are we printing? Um, because sometimes you might want to do different settings for different sizes of prints. Well, I print things as small as this. Um, it's, a, it's a decent size pot, like uh, design, but it's as, as thin as this, as far as layers going up to this size. This is a Magic the Gathering deck box, so it's about 120 grams. I print it like this side by side. Um, these also have like some cool stuff. So, but we're, I'm not here to sell you on this stuff, even though I'd love it if people would buy some of these because uh, I'm selling them as a product. Um, but what I'm here to tell you guys is how, what settings I use so you can do these kind of products yourself. So um, let's go over to my slicer over here. This is PETG filament, so P-E-T-G. This is not PLA and PLA plus or anything like that. Just normal PETG stuff. This is inland PETG. Um, inland is the stuff that you buy from uh, Micro Center, at least that's where I buy my inland filament from. So my main things that I've changed that are not default to like say like the normal PETG settings is flow rate, which I have 0.98 is the flow rate. Flow rate I think ranges from, is, uh, here it says it ranges from 0.95 to 1.05 depending on what you're trying to go for, but I've kind of solidified it at 0.98. If I go higher, you get a lot of stringiness between stuff. So like when I'm printing up here, it'll get a lot of stringiness in here if I go higher on flow rate. Um, if I go lower, it starts to glob up a teeny bit, but the globbing up is actually more of a temperature problem, but it does glob a little bit. So that's one of the settings I do change, 0.98. And then finally, recommended nozzle temperature. Um, this doesn't matter really. You're actually looking for the, the print temperatures down below here. So nozzle, I have it as one or 265 for the first layers or so. Um, it really, the first layers are super easy because I have a textured surface. So um, I don't know if my camera is going to be able to get this. Uh, let me, uh, so my camera, it's probably not going to get it. Well, this is a textured surface, so it looks really good for a texture. It does not look like layered lines like everywhere else. So I have that, for, I have this printing upside down, so the texture is going to be on top and bottom. So like the customers will love it because they barely even notice that it's a 3D printed object. So yeah, basically you want to have um, 265 for first layer, but the other layers, the main thing on the other layers, I have it as 279 degrees Celsius. That is really high. Most like the recommended thing on the container itself is like 240. But why don't I do 240 is because the Bamboo P1S printers, if you're printing at default speed, are super fast and because they're super fast you need to make sure the temperature is higher for it to be able to melt fast enough to be able to like melt onto itself um, if I went lower on my temperature I would oftentimes get a lot of clumping or something I main thing I would describe it as when it's printing on like a on a layer above it it would basically get caught or it would kind of not stick to the bottom layer so then it has like this little piece it's like kind of curling 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 and then eventually it sticks. But once it sticks, you just have a big glob there and a whole mist layer line. That's basically what happens when it's not high enough temperature. It needs to be high enough temperature to melt the plastic that's coming out, but also somewhat melt, or not melt, but like, I guess make soft the layer underneath so that it can actually like layer onto that and stick together. So that's why I have it so high. So 279 degrees for all of the other layers. Um, and then 0.98 for flow rate. That's the, that's really the main key points. Um, if you guys just want to look at my other settings, like this is the filament settings. Here's my cool settings. I don't have like keep fan on always, or so, I don't have that stuff on, even though like some people might say you should. I, I haven't noticed it to help me. I imagine if you get to bigger parts, you might need to have that on. So that might be different. Um, no setting overrides and nothing in the advanced section. So yeah, that's basically the settings I have. Now, um, that, that, if you're watching just for that, that's basically all you need. But let's talk about some of the issues I've had in coming to this. One is um, temperature control in the room. So we just went through a winter, which was the worst time ever for 3D printing. I've had to throw away so much stuff because 3D printing in the winter, like a cold breeze somehow gets into the room, like somebody opens the room while it's in mid-print and it's colder outside than inside. 
it ruins the print basically like the breeze yes my my thing is in a chambered box kind of the breeze still gets in there and the cold air will mess up a couple layers and then it junks my my print which sucks because one of these things of plastic that's a lot of plastic that's a few bucks of plastic or so and a few hours of work so that all of that goes to nothing so that kind of sucks um so that's one issue i've had other issues is printing in white i hate printing in white um, I actually am probably not going to even list white as an option anymore unless other than I will print enough for like these kind of 3d prints these like thin ones but I'm what I'm gonna do is pretty much print a whole kilogram of those products just so I can have them stocked and not touch it for months after that because I hate printing in white it sucks what, what what sucks about it well for one you have to extrude a ton of the plastic out of there and make sure your your chamber is very very clean because if any particles of other colors get up onto your white the white is ruined it looks like crap like like even like some of my ones that I'm selling like there's like still smudges of other colors that like somehow got in there even like there's a smudge right here of a of a red color. I'm like, what the flip? It's like that much through the print and somehow it got red there. How did it get red? I don't even know. But yeah, so I hate printing in white. So basically take that for thing. Don't tr tr try to like build products that are not based around a white color. Um, if they are, make them small so they're easier to like make sure you get good ones. Um, and then you throw out the other ones that aren't good. So yeah, that's, that, that's, that's another one of my uh, issues I've had. Um, and so temperature control printing in white and I guess that's it really so the temperature control I've had to adjust a bunch I've made one of these videos as a short like a while ago and that video I was kind of covering like 280 or something like that and I've kind of it's like 279 to 80 is like kind of like my, my sweet spot of like it's probably best it depends on how cold it is and everything but yeah that's basically how to print in pet G for these larger products so if you guys enjoy this video, like and subscribe. Sorry it's long, it ran long, but I'll have the settings in the description so you know you guys can just look at that. Or more probably in the pinned comment. Uh I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.